Okay. Test, test. Okay, good. Um, so today's plan is first we'll finish um, dissecting this uh, SGD class. Uh, so last time, this is what we did last time. Um, so my computer is a bit slow. Let me toggle this. Uh, no power. Um, so last time we, uh, we covered, uh, this part, but, uh, it's not finished yet. Okay. Um, we introduced what is a dictionary. For example, this keyword right here, let me move this toggle bar on top. Okay. So last time we, uh, we introduced what is a dictionary. The dictionary, let me magnify it even more and a little bit. Okay, good. So last time we learned what is a dictionary and uh, uh, what does this mean? What What is in this constructor? Um, so after this is super, the super um, is like initiate. This super is like initiate this constructor, this dictionary this default dictionary constructor, but we can still add some of the attribute here. So for example, we can add a self, um, you know, dummy value. For example, we can set it to be um, 12, you know. So uh, if we run this class again, so sorry, uh, on my I'm on my laptop. So if you uh, if you see the frame rate is bad, um, let me just uh, scroll s slower. Um, so right now this class has been uh, redefined. All right. So with we have a dummy value here. So this is called an attribute. Um, for example, so now. If we do this, we initialize this optimizer again. So let's add a, a line of code here. We'll see that the optimizer now has a new attribute. So let's do this optimizer. And we have this dummy value. And what is this dummy value? It's gonna be 12, all right? Why, why this is, uh, this is, uh, um, why introducing such mechanics uh, is handy is because now we can access, once we have initialized um, in this dummy value in the constructor, for example, we can add something else. So uh, let's do uh, self. Uh, what else? For example, later um, in um, this coding homework four, we'll learn something called weight decay. So for example, we can do weight decay, okay? Equals, um, let's say 10 to the negative uh, fifth power, okay? And uh, um, let's run this again. So now, if right now, uh, so right now it doesn't have a weight decay. So I believe. So for example, if we if we see um, right now, we have add parameter parameter group defaults dummy value low state vector and blah blah blah. We don't have we don't have this uh, uh, weight decay. Okay. But if we reinitialize, we reinitialize this optimizer with this new attribute, we, we can see that we'll have this weight decay right here. So this is auto completion. So let me put dot here. Uh, so as we can see, the weight decay is right here. Okay. So if we use VS code, we'll see that all these, for example, so this cube here is like a built-in function and this is a tribute of uh, uh, this class. So let me just add uh, add here. So uh, wrench icon uh, means the tribute of the attribute of a class. 
and uh, uh, the box icon, a cube icon, okay? So it means a method or say a function, okay? So a function of this class, all right? So now, um, well, for example, this step right here is a function, okay, within this class. So once this class is initialized like this, later we can see the step function can be applied in this way. So let's scroll down to the template. So for example, as we can see, okay, so optimize a step. So the step function is used in this way, all right? And we can even access, so for example, we can define a new function. We can define, uh, we, we can define another function. So for example, we can get get LR and self, okay. Um, what this function does is, for example, uh, we can return. So now the input is self. So I want to emphasize uh, the input is self. What does that mean is this function has access to every single attribute of the class. So this function has access to every attribute of this class. For example, we know that, um, we know that we have a uh, default and we have LR. So for example, we can say uh, return self defaults LR, okay? And we, we can try, so now we can try, uh, we have a get a, uh, this get learning rate function, all right? So it returns the default values learning rate. And uh, um, okay, I don't, uh, let me let me check above. Okay, good. Now we initialize this again. We'll see that this, uh, We'll see that this class has one more method called getLR, so optimizer. Right here. So as we can see, it's a, it's a cube. It means uh, it's a function. So getLR and uh, uh, in the defining getLR, um, we have a self, but when we apply this function we should not put anything like self here because uh, this self right here. So this self right here is referencing to this optimizer. So for example, we don't have to, uh, we don't have to put any variable here. It's just a get LR and we'll get a 10 to the negative third power. Okay. And right here, if we change our learning rate to 10 to the negative fourth power, so we're, initialize this optimizer again. So if we run this, we'll get 10 to the negative fourth power, okay. So this is self here. So the self is referencing. So this self is, uh, is referencing uh, the class itself. I mean, it's kind of literal. It has this literal meaning of referencing uh, the class itself. And uh, um, and this is um, like how this class works. And the last part of uh, the coding lecture, you know, is what is this a step function? Okay. Um, first, I wanna um, say about this closure. This closure is also um, a PyTorch, this type of uh, uh, implementation that because PyTorch would like to incorporate every possible 
uh, every possible um, this optimization method. And in the quasi-Newton method, uh, if um, we, we haven't learned uh, quasi-Newton yet, but in the quasi-Newton method, if we need to update our loss function within this loop, this closure will be, become handy. But as of right now in our class, we can ignore this, okay? So this, what does this do? So this part of the code, um, so step, this method step is literally like W k plus one equals W k minus alpha times uh, grad F. Okay, it's literally this. So right now is uh, um, we're implementing. So this is uh, for the final project, we're implementing this part, but for different methods. So this is the simplest the stochastic gradient descent. Uh, it depends on what our train loader is feeding the model. It, it can be either one sample at a time, 16 samples. So this can be a mini batch. Uh, stochastic gradient descent, or uh, like uh, our vanilla one sample stochastic gradient descent. Now, now let's dissect this code. First, we have a parameter group, and this is uh, this is more like a, a f formalism. Okay, uh, so surely, so let me add a, a a remark here. So the remark is usually uh, self, so parameter groups is a list of length of len equals one, okay? So which means it has only one element and let, let's verify it, all right? So uh, right, right here, okay, so um, so let's do type optimizer, whoops, uh, param groups. All right. So uh, apparently, as we can see, Python tells us this parameter group is a list. And what does this list has? It's right here, okay. So now here I already run this code. Uh, the optimizer parameter group, it, it has only uh, one element. So we check the length. So as we can see, uh, let's, let me print these two. So for example, uh, we have, uh, this, is, uh, this is a list and this is, uh, has length one. So then we see what is the type of uh, this parameter group. And it, it is a type of dictionary. It's a dictionary we learned in last Friday's lecture. Okay, so like I said, the dictionary is very commonly used in PyTorch to store various things when we need explanation to something. So for example, if we, uh, if we kind of just, you know, try to get a grasp of what this thing actually is, so if we just put it in the wrong, you know, if we run this, it will show uh, what it is. So it shows something like this, all right? So for example, the LR, so this is a typical uh, dictionary format. That is uh, the key, column, the value. And if we see a comma right here, it means, okay, so that's one item of the dictionary. And now this is the next item of the dictionary. And the dictionary, uh, next item of the dictionary is now, uh, for example, it's a name, the name is SGD. Okay, so next is a key item of our, our optimizer, that is uh, uh, the params. So the params is, a, first of all, it's a list. So let's dissect it again. And uh, let me comment out this line just to, just to suppress the output. Okay. So let's say uh, remove the semicolon to 
get a glimpse of what this dictionary is like. Okay. So, and as we can see the param, so this one, so this is a dictionary and uh, this, this item is the most important item of all. So if we run this, we'll see that it, first of all, it's a list and then every entry is like uh, some tensor. However, it, it has this weird, you know, like preamble, it says parameter containing and we'll, we'll see in a moment. Uh, first of all, let, let's check this type, okay. All right, so it's a list, right? So now we check what is the first entry of this list. And we'll get an answer why that's the case. So it is a special, it is a special uh, variable type called a parameter. Um, like all parameter matrix of our neural network is of this type. Uh, why it's a parameter is because, so for a tensor, so for example, for a tensor, torch tensor. Let's just do this. So as we can see here, it has no, so this, the require grad is false for this one, for this tensor. But for a parameter data type, okay, so for a parameter data type, so if we if we try to view what this is, let, let's view like one, okay, let's view one, so, uh, uh, so we can view, so for example, let's view this one. So for example, Right here, we have, this should be like, based on our in, uh, original initialization, this should have two, uh, 56 entries. And if we look at the last one, it's a require grad equals true. Um, so what, what does it mean is we will, PyTorch will track. So every single operation involving this uh, tensor, PyTorch will track. Uh, the gradient computation, uh, unless we wrap it in. So uh, PyTorch will uh, track its gradient. So let me add here. So Torch will track the gradient unless we use it in a with Torch, uh, with Torch no grad block. Okay. So un unless we, uh, we, we use, you know, we perform our operation in this uh, Torch no grad operation. For example, in the explicit gradient descent, we'll use with torch no grad because we, we don't want to track the gradient descent itself. The gradient descent is for us to update the parameter. Uh, we only want to track the gradient when we compute the loss function. So that's uh, that's a reason we used this torch no grad before. Okay. And now let's go back of dissecting our code. Uh, so now if we, if we know what is this parameter group, uh, we, we know that. So for example, so for group uh, in self parameter group. So essentially this group, because it is the lens one. So the for group in the list of things. So for example, so if we use for loop of uh, uh, if we use for loop, so for example, we for something for item in a list of uh, one item. So for example, we have a dictionary and we have param and it is maybe torch uh, tensor. Uh, let's just do a range so it's easier. All right. So for example, if we have uh, a for loop applied on a list of a length one, 
will just get you know this only entry. So it's a it's a same thing. It's the same thing happening here. All right. So it's uh, where where it is. Uh, right here. So it's the same thing happens here. Same thing happens here. So for example, this group right here. Uh, so which means the group is nothing but a, a self group, uh, the zeroth element. All right. So now if we look at the next line for param in group params, and if we look back at here, so uh, I think I commented out the cells. Uh, yeah, I think I, I commented out the cells. So for example, oh, I think I, I here. So the params is, we have a column, right? So the params is whole, all these matrices. Um, so, um, and it's a list. It's a list of all the parameters uh, in our neural network. Okay. So normally this one, this one is added here for uh, debugging purposes. So this if, so this if block, this if block uh, is for um, debugging purposes. So it makes, it makes our code like less buggy because sometimes, sometimes we can freeze. So sometimes we can freeze, let, let me add. Uh, and it's a typical way of training big network. So we can freeze some, uh, some weights. Uh, so um, the params grad will be of non-type. Non-type is like, non is like nothing, okay. Uh, non is not N-A-N um, or N N-A-N, um, but non is like a special uh, Python type. It just means nothing. So it's not there. Sometimes uh, it's useful for uh, expand dimension and such, but non is just like, it's just not there. So if we print a non, nothing will pr uh, print it. And we will see that. So if we are interested in learning some big model, very big model, for example, uh, one billion parameters. And this is a necessary technique is we train part of the model, we freeze the other part of the weight. And uh, then if we have certain weights being frozen, then the parameter grad is like, uh, is not, okay. And then we, let's look at the next. So, Next is the params grad data, okay. So first of all, we, we've learned before, like uh, if uh, loss backward, so if loss backward is performed, uh, so every parameter will have param grad, okay. So for example, right here. So every parameter will have a, a prime grad. So if we put data right here is like getting the value. So why we're putting data. So the data is like uh, retrieving the value. So even though retrieving the value without trigger auto grad, okay. Um, I mean, th this is a, again, this is a formalism. So for example, so right here, uh, the grad param is just the gradient of loss with respect to this specific weight, okay? Because here we iterate the parameter in, the, in this uh, parameter groups. So this is like, this is not all the gradient. This is just a gradient for one matrix. So right here, the, gra uh, the gradient uh, parameter. And then we update our parameter. Again, this is a, so this is a, uh, so again, this is a, so this data right here. So, so data is uh, again, so data, let, let me just add this. Data is like uh, uh, retrieving. 
So data is like with no bread. Okay. Because later we'll see that when we apply this step, we don't have to add this with torch no grad block. Okay. So when we implement our um, SGD or say gradient descent in this way, we don't have to have this uh, block. Okay. So we only we only do computation with its like a value. So without, um, you know, so because a tensor is like a whole wrapper of different things. For example, it has its gradient, its tracking, uh, its value, and blah blah blah. So here the data is we only retrieve its value. That's it, and then we update the parameters data. Okay, and this is literally like so. It's a so this is uh, basically this. Okay, so now it's a gradient descent. So in this group, the LR is just uh, the learning rate, which we'll see. So for example, which we'll see here. So the learning rate is right here. It's 10 to the negative fourth power. And uh, um, then our SGD is being performed. So the SGD is implemented. All right. So that then the SGD is implemented right here. So in this cell block, in this uh, code block, the SGD is fully implemented. And uh, um, and as I said earlier, this is the template. So if we want to improve our SGD, uh, we can modify this template. For example, so uh, if uh, we want to update our learning rate, we can add a simple uh, learning rate decay. So for example, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I want to do this uh, next lecture. Maybe this is already enough. Okay, so otherwise, uh, maybe it's too much information. Um, so that's a full implementation of our optimizer using a class. And then now let's uh, scroll down to, um, to the full pipeline, okay, which is right here. So then we set up our um, loss function and we set our epoch and we set our, our optimizer. And then we can uh, using this uh, training, what they call it, what this call is pipeline. So in our homework four, we have a full pipeline. Uh, so for example, this is a pipeline and this is like a template we can copy and paste uh, to our own use. For example, um, so first is we start the train mode. Um, this is this is sometimes necessary if we add, we'll later learn some regularizing technique. For example, if we add a dropout, the model train is telling us, oh, you have to use this dropout. Um, so that's why we add it here. So this is more like a formalism. Okay. So use for when we have dropout. So, and we'll learn what is dropout later. So it's a typical uh, neural network training strategy. Um, and this is loss val. Um, this is an empty list bef um, in each epoch. It's just we track during each epoch what is a loss function value. And we want it decreasing. So um, that's our goal. Um, and let's read this. Uh, so this is a wrapper. So this is a wrapper for our progress bar. Okay, so this is a template as well. So we can we can safely reuse it elsewhere. Uh, P bar just means uh, progress bar. So this is a progress bar. And the train loader is, uh, so each item of the train loader, we have learned that the first one is data. The second one is target. We just put the data in our model. We get the output. Let me, let me change this to data. Okay, so it's, uh, so we put the data in our model, we get the output, and then we compute the loss function between the target and the output. 
because the loss function is tracking everything's gradient. Okay, so the loss function is tracking everything's gradient. Um, it, it's like a it's it's a huge object. So that's why we only so this is a we only record um, its value. So the item is a. Uh, this item thing is only we get its value. So we don't track anything's gradient. And this one is we, because, um, because uh, so the param gradient, the param grad is not zero, okay? Um, in last iteration. And this one is to avoid the gradient being accumulate, being accumulating and which causes a numerical instability. So we, so this is also a template. So we, uh, we just zero out the gradient, and now we do back prop. And this step, so we do step is we apply the SGD. Okay, so this is SGD. Actually, I should do stochastic. And keep this in mind. This is without. So actually, uh, no with uh, torch no grad block. This is because uh, the parameter operation is using its data. So it's, it's not using the whole thing. So if we access it using data, um, it's pretty much like with torch no graph. But the other thing is we do not want to, so this is a, this is a speth, this is like a tricky thing of PyTorch implementation is we do not want to use the width torch no grad here because it will like negatively affect the performance of our optimizer. So that's why we uh, we just access its data. And as we can see here, next is a step. And last is just uh, we we just want to check if we are on track. So we want to track our loss function. Uh, for example, if our loss function start decreasing, it means we're heading the, at least in the right way. So if our loss function started to increase, you know, in at least initially it's increasing, it means something goes wrong for our implementation. Okay, so now let's try it. Uh, so our loss function is cross entropy. Our optimizer is learning rate and we run five epochs. So uh, it should start running. Uh, so for example, okay, because, because we haven't used GPU, so uh, we haven't used GPU here, so it's kind of slow. And uh, um, so as we can see, it's indeed like decreasing, though we observe the decreasing within like, for example, the three digits after the decimal, but it's still decreasing. And this is, this is normal behavior of stochastic gradient descent when we use a small batch. I believe here I used, I forgot, 16 uh, batch, okay. Um, so let, let me just stop here. And, uh, um, oh, come on, my computer is so slow and uh, it, does not even let me interrupt. Okay. Come on. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. Um, so that's it for the coding lecture. Okay. So next is we'll learn uh, the mini batch. So we'll analyze mini batch. Uh, all right. Now my Chrome freezes. Oh my God. Um, But anyway, um, I guess it's uh, it's final time for my eight year laptop. This is like a first generation MacBook Pro using Retina screen, so it's uh, it's eight something years. But uh, now let me change my screen share. Um, oh, by the way, um, I forgot to say. So uh, I'm not sure if uh, every one of us saw the announcement that we will have this final project uh, team up session on Wednesday. And uh, uh, on Wednesday, um, and 
if we haven't seen the announcement yet, please go refer to the announcement. And there are several questions to prepare. And so we'll take turns uh, for us to answer the question. And then uh, we'll, you know, enter some breakout rooms and you can, you can, you can go to breakout rooms to talk to potential teammates uh, you are interested in. So if uh, we have certain, for example, um, certain student in one of us who cannot find a team, so we may increase the team size to uh, three people so that uh, uh, it's easier to, uh, you know, teaming up. So now let me change my screen share to my iPad. Uh, okay. Okay, here we go. Uh, let me let me stop my Chrome. My Chrome is like freezing. Oh my god. Full script. Um, let me, let me stop my, okay, here we go. Um, so where's my Apple pencil? All right. So today we'll learn mini batch SGD. Uh, mini batch SGD perhaps is current de facto algorithm for everything. Um, so the vanilla SGD is not actually used in application. So everything, for example, if we uh, if we see um, some fancy applications of neural network, for example, starting from AlphaGo to machine translation. So all these models are trained using mini batch. For example, I believe for AlphaGo model, if if we check their nature paper, they mentioned that the trading batch is 20, uh, 20 48 games per, uh, per batch. So, um, and other, and all other uh, machine learning model are all trained using mini batch, for example, um, I can't think of something, for example, the famous ResNet for uh, telling, classify, you know, the ImageNet object, they are all trained, they are all trained using this mini batch SCD. Let me put my bar here. Okay. Um, whoops. Oh, where, where is that? Okay, here we go. Um, so let's recall. So the GD is, uh, let's recall, we have N samples, okay. So N is number of samples and uh, the GD is, uh, we update our neural network uh, by the following and our last function. Uh, did I use capital F? Let me check my notation real quick. Um, Yes, we use F, okay. So our F, so this is our last function, okay. Uh, can be rewrited as element wise loss. So it is uh, I from one to N and F of I, F W. So this last function is usually like uh, equal to L uh, of uh, W and uh, uh, X I sample and Y I. Okay. So it's like we apply uh, and we have one over N. So it's the average of every sample's loss function. This is our loss function for gradient descent. And if we take gradient descent, it's, uh, it's just something like this. So it's like we evaluate the gradient for every sample and the SGD is, uh, In each iteration, we, in each iteration, we update 
the gradient for one sample, and this is f of i k. So i k is a random sample. All right, this is a review of gradient descent and stochastic gradient descent. Um, apparently, the, the, the rational, a rational question, um, a rational question to ask is, is there something in between? And the answer is yes, it's called a mini batch. And uh, uh, why it's called a mini batch, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll learn in a moment. So, um, so the mini batch is something in between is, uh, you know, we, we choose this, uh, we, we choose this kind of small. So is we sample, is we sample a subset. This is uh, a random sampled subset of uh, one, two, two N with size little b, okay. So which means uh, this number right here. So this number right here is b. Okay. This, this is the most natural idea actually um, is uh, Every time um, we just sample a bunch of samples and we compute their gradient, we take average and we apply the gradient descent uh, to this one. And now we wanna analyze this. Um, so we wanna analyze its convergence and we'll find that the first step is exactly the same. So we write on the error equation. Let me see if I have time. So let's, uh, so we may not have time to finish it all because it's a long computation. Uh, but uh, let's still write on the first error equation, all right? And the, er the error equation uh, is almost the same is we subtract, um, we subtract the best. So uh, let me copy and paste. So we subtract the best possible So for example, we subtract the best possible neural network here and we subtract it on the right-hand side as well. Okay. And we subtract uh, it here. So we subtract it here. That is, uh, because this is zero. So this is a local minimizer because our best neural network is a local minimizer. That's why it's gradient is zero. So we insert it here, but uh, directly comparing these two uh, is like, uh, I don't know. It's like, uh, it's not, so directly comparing these two is not, uh, it's not very, let's say um, familiar to us, but we can convert this uh, to a problem we have analyzed. Okay, so now let's do this. And, uh, um, and what we have analyzed is following, is we rewrite this thing as, so, so instead of comparing this with uh, the best possible, we just compare with uh, the current one. So for example, uh, what we have here is gonna be, um, I think I forgot to write the learning rate. Did I? Yes, here we go. My bad. So we have a learning rate alpha K here, learning rate alpha K here, and learning rate alpha K here. Okay. So learning rate alpha K here. And what we have here is learning rate alpha K. So we insert
what we insert is is this term, okay? So what we insert it, what we wanna insert is this term. And moreover, this term, okay? So this term has nothing to do with I. So this term has nothing to do with I. It's like we can pull it out of this term. Uh, maybe, let me move this. So this term is uh, independent with I, uh, which, which means um, it doesn't affect. So this um, sum then take average, it doesn't affect this term. This term can be um, easily moved out and in. And so we subtract this term and it's the same thing as we plus this term back. Okay, so it is plus alpha k, bk, oh, sorry, uh, the, this term is plus, so we have, sub, we have to subtract, okay. And this is, uh, As we can see here, both of these, both of these are independent of this I K. So it's like a, for each I, for each I in this subset, uh, uh, sampled subset, this is the same. Okay, so again, these two terms, both of these terms are independent with respect to I, and we, which means the sum then take average so it doesn't affect. So we can rewrite this term as uh, just as a regular term. And what we have here is WK uh, subtract alpha K Okay, so now we we converted right now everything follow the same with SGD is we have converted this problem to a gradient descent problem. All right. This term. Uh, we have analyzed in the convergence of the gradient descent. Essentially, we have to require this function, this gradient is Lipschitz continuous and, uh, uh, and this function itself is strongly convex. It means a Hessian is greater than or equal to a positive constant. And then this term is convergent. And the key is to how to analyze this term. So, uh, so this term we'll analyze uh, next class. So we don't think I, I have time. But the, the way of analyze this is almost the same with SGD, but a, a few caveats. So we have to use some probability. Um, so that, that's it for today. So on Wednesday, we'll have this team up session. If we have not checked the question yet, please go to the announcement, check the question. And the, uh, that's it for today.